Okay, folks, so uh, Puma Fist saw my little short on YouTube <laughs> asking him, what the hell, man? Because he called me a shill on Ethan Van Skyver's channel. So he uh, put together a little two-minute video explaining why, and it's pretty much what I thought, but uh, he kind of broadens it and generalizes it. And instead of just the matter for which he originally called me a shill, which was in the case of I saw him number one, I put out a review that when, said when I got to the middle of the book, and it's right before the ad page uh, in the middle of the book, I basically said, you know, yes, this thing is chock full of errors, and I don't like that, but if the story continues in the way that it's going, then I'm going to call this a good comic book. Now. That's something that's actually happened to me on two other prior occasions. Once when I saw the movie Captain Marvel, and once when I saw the movie Wonder Woman 1984. And both of those occasions, I remember thinking, okay, this is starting like crap. This is starting like absolute garbage. Both Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman 1984, I am just like pissed that I had to pay money to come see this. It, it, it's, uh, it's boring, it's, uh, it's not anything I expected to see. So, you know, both of those movies started off really badly for me. But then, in the middle of the movie, there was a shift. And in the case of Captain Marvel, it's when, you know, her amnesia was lifted and she started to realize her own history. And then in Wonder Woman 1984, it got into the psychology of Maxwell Lord and, and how he became a little bit of a more sympathetic character. So in both of those cases, the stories took a dramatic turn where I liked where things were going at that point. But that isn't to say that I finished out liking both of the movies any more than it is to say that I finished out liking Isom overall. In fact, you know, with Isom, I eventually gave it a thumbs down, just as I eventually gave Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman 1984 a thumbs down, although I will rank Wonder Woman 1984 higher than Captain Marvel, because at least Captain, or at least Wonder Woman 1984 didn't start playing uh, no doubt music, uh, just a girl, and laughing in my face at the fact that I had bought tickets. That was beyond the pale in, in Captain Marvel. I'm sorry, I'm never forgiving whoever the hell did that movie and made that particular choice to take one of the, the, the fight scenes toward the end and just play it with no doubt in the background. That's unforgivable. I, I never want you to work in Hollywood again. <laughs> whoever made that choice. So, you know, it's not, it's not, I'm not unaccustomed to, you know, massaging my opinion as I go through one of these things. Now, what Puma Fist was specifically complaining about, he's saying that you're going to roll over to appease somebody. Now, in, in one sense, that's true, because one of the people I will roll over to appease is me. When I started off my ISOM uh, commentaries, I was really, really angry at first, and I came to realize that the reason I was angry was because I had paid so much money, I expected a bare minimum of quality control and, a, and, and not as many unforced errors in the very beginning of the book as I was getting. I mean, it's like I open the book and I'm getting smacked in the face with error, 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 error. Not things that are just like stylistic choices, things that are just flat freaking wrong with the book. I mean, there, there's just so many things, and you can go back to my 11 video presentation on that. But when you go back to that 11 video presentation, the one that um, I start off with uh, blurry, what, what is it, blurry opening, blurry city, or something like that. I don't, I don't remember the exact name. That is the one I consider my first one, but that actually is not my first video. On ISOM, I had two, at least two videos prior to that, one of which just reacting to the fact that I got a $35 book that was this big and a $45 reprint book that was that big. Now, Eric July has a point when he says, you know, a $45 reprint book, you don't have to pay as much for that because you've already paid the creators for the material for the most part. You're just paying them royalties now. So yeah, you can you can set you can do reprint books a lot cheaper than you can do the original books, okay? Which is fair enough. But still, to get so much content 
in one of those reprint volumes as opposed to the uh, the, the ISOM book. Ugh, you know, it, it graded on me. And that carried over into my very first, you know, what the hell is wrong with this first page? What is wrong with this, this writing I can't read? Uh, and, and all of these uh, silent panels that are showing me pretty much nothing. And the very first video that I did, I was just, I was angry. I was over the top angry. And not only did I notice that, but my viewers noticed that. And my viewers were like, there were a lot of viewers who I felt were communicating to me that when they were reading, watching through the playlist, because I've got a rip verse playlist out there, they were stopping there because they were like, you're just, you're just way too critical at this point and you need to, uh, you know, back down or what have you. And I was like, well, okay, if I'm not happy with it and my viewers aren't happy with it, then obviously something's wrong and I need to, you know, figure out what that is. And in my case, it turned out I was just really agonizing over the fact that I'd paid $35 for this mess. So once I got over that and I said, okay, you know, what's done is done. I paid the price. I need to just go through and and I'll redo this video. And first I'll, I'll do a video explaining, you know, why it was I was so over the top. And then I will go ahead and redo this video and uh, then we'll go on from there. And I think the 11 videos that I put out were pretty solid. Now, I don't remember you coming in and calling me a shill for that point. But if I were a shill, it would have been at that point. It would have been right at the beginning when I was starting out and I was super upset that I had just paid $35 for this book that was just full of these unforced errors right from the very beginning. And you know, I was displeased I displeased myself with that video. I displeased my viewers with that video. Yeah, if my viewers are coming back to me and complaining about the kind of content I'm putting out, I would be kind of stupid to not think about toning it down some. But really, I toned it down mostly for my sake, and then later on, I actually had to go back and put like a, a pinned comment on my angry video and say, hey, keep watching in the playlist. I do calm it down, and you know I'm going to be doing constructive criticism from here on out. But that wasn't the part that you had a problem with, it seemed. Because I remember you specifically calling me a shill when I got to the stage in ISOM number one, which is like the stages in Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman 1984 that I just talked about, where I said, you know what? I like the direction of the book now. You know, I didn't see where it was going before, but I see where it seems to be going now. And if it does go in that direction, and if the quality of the book just maintains or gets better from here on out, then I can say that this is an acceptable book. Now, I wasn't doing that to please anybody any more than I was any more than I had that opinion during the movies and uh, for the sake of pleasing the directors that were out there. I just basically said, "You know what? I actually like this. I I see like so much potential in the fact that you could have this mix of characters all bumping heads with each other almost completely at random. It's almost it's almost becoming a comedy." at this part, a comedy of errors, where you start to see, it's like, man, I just want to be, you know, in the, in the, talking about ISOM here, I just want to be out at my ranch doing my thing, you know, putting putting food on the table for myself and, and my employees, and I just want to be a normal business person, and here I am in this damn city again, where all of this chaos takes place. That was the thing, it's like, it was such a chaotic, place at that point in the book that you could really feel for Avery, the main character in Isom, and, and understand why it was he just never wanted to be in that damn city. So, did the book continue on of that quality? No, it did not. Unfortunately, you know, I turn the page and all of a sudden we're off in another direction. We get back into the main storyline and the main storylines diverged in another direction and we never get back onto the track that I thought the book was going. So yeah, I was I was disappointed by that. Now, if I were rolling over, don't you think I would have continued my, my high opinion of the book until the end? I mean, don't you think I would have, because I went through and, you know, I savaged the fight choreography, 
I said, now, you know, when I say savaged, I'm not talking about I went into a flying rage over it. I'm just saying that I was highly critical of fight choreography, the things that I couldn't understand in the book, um, the way that there was all sorts of errors. In fact, I made one video that just basically said, here is an error of every single kind you can think of, lettering, coloring, art, story, dialogue, blah, blah, blah. Don't you think I would have laid off of those if I were rolling over and trying to be a shill? I mean, I'm not in contact with anyone. Eric July and I have never spoke other than, you know, one time in Twitter I told him I was pissed off about getting getting a $35 book that didn't have minimum quality control, and he said, congrats, kind of cryptically. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Um, I even made a video calling him out saying, you know, hey, have me on your show. I'll, we'll go through my criticisms of your book. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't see, I don't see shill behavior in that. So would I like to work for one of these uh, comic book guys and, and be able to supervise that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, I would absolutely, if, if Eric July wanted to send me a copy of ISOM number two and say, here, you know, I like your critiques. I want you to take a look at this. And before I go to print, I want you to, to you know, critique the hell out of it and show me everything in here that I could possibly change to make it better. You know, I have a feeling it's way, you know, towards the, the, the end stages of the game now, but... If he were to do that, I'd be like, okay, sure. And I'd even do it for free because right now I'm not in an uh, economic situation uh, contractually wise where I can uh, t take any outside jobs. But I would love to, you know, do something like that sometime. I would love to be an editor. I would love to, to have somebody's script come my way and then say, you know, what can I do to make this better? What is, uh, you know, have I made any unforced errors? You as the outside viewer, as Watu the Watcher, you know, tell me, tell me what it is I missed. Sure, I'd love to do that, you know, because that would only make the product better. That would make, uh, you know, the, the book more worthwhile for all the people who I know are going to buy it. I mean, you don't think that uh, the overwhelming majority of people who bought ISOM number one, sight unseen, aren't going to buy ISOM number two now that they've seen it and... You know, especially since a lot of them are new to comics in the first place and don't know any better as to whether or not it's a quality book or not. Sure they are. So it would make me feel better if I could manage to enhance the quality of the book to the point where, you know, it, it'd be up to my standards at least. So yeah, I'd love to do that. But have I been in contact with anyone along those lines? No. I mean, I've had a couple of people who have seen my videos and have said, you know, hey, can, can you look over my stuff and tell me what it is you think of it? And I've, I've taken a couple of people in doing that. I haven't taken any pay for it. But you know, yeah, the, the, the door is open. And if anyone wants to send me something, you know, the best place to reach me is either in a comment on the video or, or uh, especially uh, DM me on Twitter. But I don't think that's changed the quality of my videos because you know, I remember I sent I sent something to Eric July at one point and I remember the first portion of the video was just like, this book's a waste of money. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe I wasn't angry and maybe I wasn't flying off the handle, but when you tell somebody that their book's a waste of money, th that can't come across well. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think I think maybe you're you're a little bit, you know, there is a saying. There is a saying that I remember from a long time ago that says people people who like to be brutally honest enjoy the brutality more than the honesty. You may be one of those people who falls along those lines. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I don't necessarily think that uh, the, the reviews have to be, you know, punches in the face, but at the same time, to tell somebody, look, this is just flat wrong. I don't understand why this is like this. Here's an error, here's an error, here's an error, here's an error. Those are gonna land like punches to the face anyway, just because, you know, you can't, you can't possibly hear feedback like that on your creative endeavor that you've spent so much money and time and sweat and energy on and, and find out that there's mistakes in it. 
that doesn't feel good, no matter how it's how the blows are being delivered. So, you know, that that's about it. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not about to ramp up my rage, you know, to satisfy you, when most of my viewers I think are a lot more satisfied with the steady tone, constructive criticism way of doing the videos that I, I hope I've settled upon. Uh, so that's it. I mean, it's really a case of your mileage may vary. It's not. It's certainly not a case of, hey, if you back off on, on uh, how bad you're criticizing me, I'll do you a solid and uh, give you some editorial work to do. Nothing like that's going on. I almost wish it were. <laughs> But uh, but no, nothing like that's going on. I, I haven't uh, I haven't gotten any bribes or uh, barters or or anything like that. So anyway, I just I just figured I'd go ahead and uh, uh, respond since uh, since you were kind enough to do a response video of your own. This one's a little bit longer than yours, but uh, uh, I think it was well worth it. And hopefully, it also explains to my fans where it is that I'm coming from. On trying to make these into, you know, it, 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 in trying to provide constructive feedback to the people who are making these books, because I don't expect anybody to see my feedback and say, "Well, I'm just going to quit." Hell no, that's not even what I want for these books. What I want for these books is for, for them to get better, for them to get better to the point where I can read these books and not feel like I need to put out a video on them. Because that would be freaking awesome. They, they, that kind of level of quality, that, that's the kind of quality I want to see. So, uh, so thanks for the reply. Hope this answers your questions. And hope this answers uh, any questions my readers had on that. Uh, I'm Mike Bartika. Please do subscribe and you'll see some uh, more commentary coming soon. And uh, I will talk to you later.